we are live a very very warm welcome to to you to the second part of the webinar titled how india's manufacturing industry can emerge stronger from this crisis let me first say those three words that have come to mean more than they ever have in the last 100 years happy to connect well who would have thought that it would take a crisis as unprecedented as this to have us realize the true meaning of human relationships our heartfelt thanks to our panelists who are among the thought leaders of the industry and at the helm of their respective organizations heartfelt gratitude to all the attendees who have joined and are joining in from different parts of the country and the world before i begin my first question let me introduce to you our panelists we have ravi raghavan chief executive officer and managing director bharat fits varna or bfw bfw is india's largest machine tool builder founded in 1962 it is one of the rare private sector machine tool companies in india to have completed 50 years of operation and is going strong bfw builds machine tools vital for manufacturing operations across industries from plastics to infrastructure to automotive and aerospace an engineer with a management degree ravi has 25 years of experience in engineering and manufacturing our second panelist is nishant jairat director metalman auto private limited nishant is a graduate of de montfort university in leicester the uk and has done financial management from cornell university the usa interesting fact some notable alumni of cornell are Ratan Tata and Roshan Murthy. Nishan has undergone extensive technical training at R&D Institute for Bicycle and Sewing Machines and Hero CR Division in Ludhiana. Nishan is a Six Sigma Black Belt holder. Metalman Auto is a leading manufacturer of sheet metal and tubular fabricated assemblies with specialty in nickel chrome with specialty in nickel chrome plating and is a leading global supplier to automotive OEMs. heavy fabrication and construction equipment industry off road vehicles and the white goods industry among the attendees or the registrants we have rep representations from uh, senior officials uh, from leading companies such as marcos mitsubishi electric carl zeiss plastic peel and ace micromatic let me begin the webinar how how are you doing gentlemen Ravi, Anand, then thank you. Deshan, Anand, uh, really good. Thank you for inviting us to be part of thank this uh, webinar. Thank you so much for for joining us. So you, Deshan, you're joining from uh, from uh, the north, right? From Delhi. From Delhi, yeah. From Delhi, and Ravi, from Bangalore. From Bangalore. Very nice oh. weather today. Bright. Yes. Inside. Yes, yes. I heard that it rained in Bangalore yesterday. Yes. To cool and suddenly it's pleasant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nishan, how does it look in Delhi? Is it is it Delhi, foggy? It's getting pretty hot. People generally have an impression that Delhi usually has a lot of smog. I oh yeah, know. Delhi has never been this clean. So <laughs> you know, enjoy for as long as it lasts. And uh, it's getting pretty hot here, eh? but uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, about the about the topic how is it looking on the ground what is what is the reality on the ground nishank have the factory started is there some partial starting of functions uh well um, certain operations have opened up in uh, certain regions of india like specifically if i talk about in particular we have opened up a plants in uh, pantnagar in rudrapur uh, so just started commencing production there uh but again you know we are operating only with respect to uh 25% manpower okay. and um <clears throat> in norangabad uh, you know we we've received permissions to open up but uh, uh as you know we are dependent on the global oems uh, mm -hmm. and automotive oems until unless they start pulling in material and you know with uh, operating in just in time it doesn't really make sense to commence the production but we've received the uh, permissions to operate okay um yet to up receive permissions in the southern region uh, i think that would open up only post uh, third of may okay ravi no we still not got any permissions because uh, 
uh, not into those essential services, but we've been asking for. Uh, yes, we got some permission to maintain the plant because uh, it's very important for a manufacturing company, ma manufacturing factories especially. And we just cannot shut it and keep it idle. And that's actually my advice to all the other manufacturing uh, factories as well, especially who use machines, that you may need a couple of people to keep running the machines for a few minutes every day, a few hours every day, so that it's in good condition. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge cost when we restart and you find many of the components not working. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> can you give us an idea of uh, how it felt like or what was the situation when the crisis hit us so unexpected unexpectedly i think uh, to share you with you my experience uh, we were at uh, delhi's auto expo and that's where we started to get a sense that something is uh, you know coming up on the horizon uh, which may impact you know human lives and the economy uh, what was the experience to you when it started and how unexpected obviously it was unexpected but what happened uh, in these last uh, you know, month and a half, six weeks, so to speak. Ravi? Uh, yes, we started getting some feel in February, but okay. uh, the machine tool industry as such was down for the whole of last year because okay. of the, primarily the demands were down by 40, 45%. So the industry was as such going through a tough uh, situation. Mm -hmm. We were okay. We were expecting that the last quarter would be good. We had uh, really good orders to execute, but we started getting this sense somewhere in February when uh, a lot of imported material from Japan and Taiwan got into problems. We were not getting shipments coming in, flights were becoming difficult, and you can see the delay. So that's where we started feeling things are more serious than what it looks like, and that became unfortunately a reality for weeks after that. Okay. So, we were actually very busy in March when things came, uh, you know, shutting. That was correct. A decision. Correct, correct, correct. Nishan? So, yeah, like, uh, you know, what you said, Anand, uh, the yeah. first uh, initial signals came in during Auto Expo itself, you know, because we were also participating and we always participate in a, because that's one of the exhibitions that, you know, we look forward to. Correct. Um, the kind of attendance that was there this time, you know, it was, it was it was ridiculously low compared to yeah. you know uh, previous years so yeah. that gave us a uh, few signals in terms of you know what was coming next but yeah. uh, the the magnitude of it was was not expected to be this big uh, you know i thought okay you know we are pretty immune to uh, uh, corona you know especially you know, yeah. everybody was talking about that the weather is going to be one factor but but i never never thought that you know it would hit us for such a long period of time and yes. or it will disrupt the manufacturing for at least one entire year. Yes. So the magnitude was 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 something that you're not uh, you know I never mean, wasn't expected that it would, it's going to be too big. Yes, yes. And and the crisis has impacted both lives and livelihoods equally. Uh, so how can you share with us uh, what is the employee morale? How has it been? And how have you been keeping that up? What are the human resources issues that have come up and how are you coping up with that, uh, Ravi? Yes, I think this is a complex situation. Uh, we would have seen the earlier issues as well, 2008, 2009, et cetera, but they were financial and the solution was financial or economic and the solution was economic. Here you have a pandemic, health issue, hygiene issue affecting both people lives and livelihood. So it's very tricky balance between uh, the things. It took a couple of weeks, I should be honest, took a couple of weeks, as Nishant also said earlier, for people to realize that, oh, it's something very serious. Right. But uh, I think people have uh, understood now that it's not a issue of a week, month, but it's a long uh, battle to be fought. And uh, they are coming in terms of reality, but yes, uh, honestly speaking, people are feeling insecure. Uh, not only I'm not talking about my company or industry across the board, society people are finding it difficult to readjust. 
a lot of people have adjusted a lot have not because we are only seeing we are interacting with people who have been able to adjust to such things and look ahead but a lot of people have not been able to it's going to be tough for a lot of people uh, so for us for me particularly biggest challenge is uh, to keep the motivation up that's my only focus that how do you keep everybody around you your employees your people around you in the society family just keep them motivated that's a sort of a single point agenda if i have in my because i believe everything will fall in place once that's in position and that's okay. for two and uh, for that two things looking at uh, every aspect of safety for them uh, i mean morally one is legally doing whatever government wants us to do or things like that so morally whatever we think uh, i believe should be done trying to do that and uh, i think the only solution for all that is communication 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 okay. never i think that communication was so important okay. we all studied we all knew it was a important element of management life everything but never did i feel that much that it's such a critical thing and that's the attempt to keep the morale high okay so can you share some ideas with us which you implemented to boost the employee morale perhaps being in touch with them or things that you've done to generally keep up the morale that has gone down in this situation yeah one is talking to people right so um, we have about 1200 people direct we've been able to touch everybody each one of them speak to them a uh, couple of times in this last six weeks so okay. uh, you know they feel that somebody is there the next level people percolated down starting with how are you how are you you know pay everybody around you because health concern is one thing and then you go and talk anything general yes but uh, in a lot of talk i mean see we we are bombarded with all of all the negative thoughts around so that's correct. A, that has to be there but correct uh, why again we also become a journalist and talk about the number of deaths so uh, the tone of communication we're trying to do is speak some good things of life there a lot correct. of good still happening in life correct Not telling that it's the end of the world telling that it's a new beginning that's going to come it's a shadow and every shadow has a light somewhere and that's why you have that shadow so making things a little bit more positive for them to feel good that's a whole attempt instead of bombarding them with newer things but when we do that we just broken it into many groups and uh, one of the tasks for them is to think of newer things because here they are not distracted here they don't have the pressure of traffic going to office coming to office time etc they're much freer in mind think and maybe some sparks come out of every of those people okay. the good part in that is people are adopted technology faster than i expected uh, that means that when we are pushed we really want to do unlimited things that's the potential of the mind human mind the second thing is great ideas have come in so this has given me an opportunity to find many hidden leaders within my group which okay people you know they came up some are yes. shy. <laughs> like we see some yeah. uh, actors actresses who are very shy but when the camera is on they yes close, right? <laughs> so those people that come out and it's a very sign for us okay people. so you are discovering new talents and you're so right that this is times of crisis also bring out hidden potential in people and that's actually what this webinar is about to bring out the real potential that people and uh, industry stakeholders have not been focusing on so much as they should uh, so nishant share with us uh, uh, what the em employee morale has been how have you been uh, boosting that and communicating with your people yeah like you know uh, what uh, uh, ravi told about i mean the said uh, communication has played a very important role and you know the sense of creating uh, positivity around this communication that has been the uh, foremost uh, important thing for us and uh, i think uh, people we are trying to convince people to accept that this is the new normal right and uh, 
any change is difficult right so adapting to this new change is also very difficult for people to uh, digest um, we are you know trying to send them various type of motivational videos and quotes and trying to you know show them the positive side of it and you know right. we are trying to convince them that you know with any kind of crisis comes the new opportunity opportunity for you to perform you know like what ravi also shared as a very good example in terms of you know he's he's looking at ways to you know find new talent so this this acts as an opportunity for them to showcase their uh, you know their capabilities to the top management so uh, the it's it's not very different from what ravi is doing um i think you know uh, just to add uh, another point uh, to this conversation is that uh, i think this is the time when you know we we feel that we've reset ourselves right so uh, this gives us an opportunity uh, to revisit the drawing board you know list down all the processes that we've been doing as an organization you know go back to the strategy work on the swot analysis and then try to you know work on your weaknesses primarily right. so that right. is what we've been trying to do with people not only from the uh, strategic aspect but also from the people's aspect you know we realize that training is by one thing that we can you know uh, highly capitalize on so that's what we've been doing you know tying up with udemy to to uh, you know provide free courses to our employees so so that those kind of activities what are uh, primarily what we've been doing and we've, like uh, we've been touching base with every single employee you know using the technology uh, every morning we are conducting morning meetings um, you know and and what another unique initiative we did was uh, you know we we somewhat made their family also part of this conversation okay. right so uh, we've tried to create uh, you know um, a, a social circle where uh, the employee kids can also participate you know with other kids because you know we don't want to feel them uh to feel lonely because they're not able to go out play with their friends so that is something uh unique what we are doing that's an excellent excellent program you want to you want to add to that uh, no absolutely a very very interesting last point of in, involving yes. uh, the, the family as well because yes. two things i would say that i also discovered i mean it's a okay. time where, you know you also leader normally we say that when you become a leader you are a lonely creature right <laughs> correct correct uh, this is also a time that uh, you know i could uh, learn about myself and two things i discovered one is uh, uh, i thought uh, i was fairly good in compassion right i was very compassionate yes. and i i realized that there's a lot of ground to be covered still for me to do that so that's uh, my weakness that i discovered the second was uh, i never realized that uh, society is such a big stakeholders we all talk about it we have learned about it in management we practice it to an extent but the when it hits you the real realization that society is such a big stakeholder in everything that you do so that That's makes true. the whole purpose of your organization much more stronger and hopefully uh, all of us when we come out of this will be much stronger organizations stronger people stronger societies because this uh, realization is i mean it's a real feel that it's happening otherwise we i mean it becomes one part of the whole thing right here you yes. are not looking at many of the other stakeholders this is a primary stakeholder the people and the society so i think these are two major realization that come to us just to add to nishan's point yeah we we have shared a lot of books making people read right and uh, uh, it's been a, a good thing that the people's mind is occupied on certain constructive things and to listen to the news is involved in fact yes uh, am i audible yes, yes. Yeah. yeah okay so ravi you mentioned a very relevant point that as leaders uh you know as a leader one is lonely and uh, so that is my next question that as leaders to so your respective organization you are able to allay fears you are able to provide some degree of comfort to people who work for you but you also know the bigger storm that is has been looming on the horizon which is short term and mid term and long term economic impact and you're doing this dual role of providing 
empathy and compassion to your employees and then conversing with industry bodies and uh, you know people in policy circles as to what to do next because nobody has any clue of where this is going to go this, this dual role i want is where the next question is that uh, you know what are the uh, you know mid term mid term challenges that you feel as leaders we need to prioritize uh, in order to address them perhaps it's you know better a better environment where uh, plants can be opened maybe partially or completely or better security uh, to people who join uh, maybe some support from policy makers or authorities to provide security and a better conducive envir environment for e the economy to open i don't know so what are the mid term challenges that we need to address or the things that authorities need to do to get the economy back in gear uh, nishant i think uh, the foremost thing that what we need to do as uh, leaders you know yes. is to increase uh, you know resilience within our okay. own organization okay right uh, you know we have to adapt to agile and uh, lower cost basis mm -hmm. primarily and uh, i think uh, you know we should look at ways to maximize uh, uh, you know uh, adaptation of digi digitization within okay. the organization you know whether it is to even connect with the customers like you know of course you know the traveling is out of question for next a uh, uh, few months but you still need to keep in touch with your uh, uh, customers so you know the adaptation of digitization is something that we need to look at uh, in a more rapid and at a you know reasonable cost and okay. another thing is that uh, you know we need to strongly work on uh, having a policy framework within the organization to okay. adapt risk management you know okay. this can happen once this can happen again okay uh to to prepare for uh, you know for future and uh, of course you know uh, i i would not like to repeat uh what has been uh, you know everybody's been talking about which goes without saying in terms of you know looking at your cash flows you know not only from the short term but also from the uh, mid term and um, i think um, and, um, what have we been doing at past we just need to bring in new uh, ideas into operations you know again relook at innovation relook at uh, uh, you know uh, lean management so these aspects we have to we have to uh, start again you know okay so we've been looking at uh, value stream mapping all our products wow you know, and trying to figure out where there is non value added not only from the process perspective but also from the information perspective right mm -hmm. so so those those are some challenges that i see with from the organization um from the macro perspective i believe uh, you know uh, the the role of associations and industry bodies you know becomes much more crucial and uh, uh, in what i i mean this is my own personal presumption is that there is no unified strength i mean unified stand against uh, you know all those things so i think um, 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 most of these bigger associations should come in together for one common objective wow. um, i think that is Brilliant. that is that is something that is required and is need of the yeah. that is so insightful that is so insightful so digitalization so my my take away uh, from your perspective digitalization learning something new or uh, doing something that has been long or learning something that has been long overdue long overdue yeah long overdue uh identifying areas that need to be strengthened which is part of learning but a little more than that yeah and uh, wider collaboration between industry circles is yeah. that right are these yeah. the takeaway even collab i mean collaboration within the stakeholders of the okay. organization okay uh, you know collaboration and digitization has never been that important what we are looking at now that's so true yeah. that's so true yeah. lovely yeah uh, let me put it into three phases i look at it in three phases so one is immediate i mean it will okay. vary from company to company the size of the company the industry etc and the situation of the company yeah. let's say it's three months it's just a survival i mean don't i'm not wanting to think of anything great and doing dramatic and all it's just to keep your nose above the water and keep swimming yeah? 
Correct, correct. As simple as that. The whole learning, I mean, I should mention this before. I, the whole learning for me in this exercise is let's make things very simple. Life is going to be easy if you make things very simple. And that's what we I want to do in the organization as well. That's my takeaway. The rest of all is glamour. Uh, so one part is a very, very short term. Just keep above the water. Whatever is needed for today, tomorrow, do that. Rest. Don't even try to do that. Okay. It can. The second is the midterm, and that's going to be the important phase as well. Right. Uh, because there is some pent up demand in everything that will come up. Suddenly it will come up. And you as an organization should be ready to cope that short term. That pent up may be a very short term demand. Try to grab that. That's what. Uh, we don't want to miss that opportunity, so we are keeping a focus on that as well. Not trying to spend any money to do now, so that or like build an inventory or do something. You're not trying to do anything like that. But be, as uh, Nishan said, be agile to that. Be aware that it's going to come. So how are you going to grab that? Keep that okay. mindset ready. Keep your processes ready so that you can jump into it very soon. Okay. Uh, and third is, of course, the long term uh, that's uh, going to come. You can't wish away. Uh, I don't want to use jargons of W, V, all that uh, type of thing. But then after this initial thing, it will become a lull because uh, there can be three situations in the world. One is India has done okay, world has done okay from the pandemic point of view. The second is India has done okay, world has not done okay. And the third is both of them have not done okay, right? Uh, so it will depend on which of this situation will be in future. The changes will happen. I'm looking at five things, which uh, I heard from many experts and I believe uh, it's aligned to my thinking as well. Uh, more of, uh, I don't know the correct word, but more, more of, uh, to, for lack of word, let's call it localization, more of, you know, uh, nationalism, uh, more, more of domestic, domesticization, okay. right? Or, non globalization. What do you, or, what do you call it? Or inward, inward focus. Yeah. Absolutely. So these, okay. these things will become right. So people where the, you know, the world is flat and things like that, maybe the reversal of those will start happening. That's one, one very important thing, right? Uh, the second is the digital, as Nishan said, it's going to happen. I'm again, not going to uh, propose that everything will digi become digital. You will not have any touch points and all. No, it will be a beautiful combination of a physical touch and a digitization. But the technology will make us so more productive and so more um, you know, efficient in doing things. Alternate cost models. That would be the third we will look at. All of us will very, very seriously look at what are the ways that we can make the most optimum cost. So that's where the uh, I wrote down a formula when I was talking to somebody today morning in US. I said price will then become a function of, it will not be equal to in some equation like it was profit and cost. Uh, it will become a function of uh, cost, profit, and value. Okay. So uh, when we buy, uh, say, a high end mobile, we don't see how much is a uh, IC cost, how much is a. Uh, no, I, I didn't hear the last part, I believe. I did hear the last part. Yeah. I when said, we buy mobile. Yeah. If uh, we take a high end mobile, yes, yes. Uh, we don't strip it down and say, oh, what was the IC cost? What is the lens cost? Yes. The camera cost, so it is only 30,000 rupees. Why are you charging one and a half? <laughs> so, value yeah. which is interesting. I mean, we didn't ask, uh, why did you pay, uh, you know, Virat Kohli so much <laughs> when he bats only 60 balls per yeah. ball is maybe, I don't know, a crore of rupees or something? Does it signify? But that's a value. So, it will become right. a function of not an empirical equation, but a function of price and profit and value. So sure. yeah. so that equations will change the whole alternate cost models that we will look at. Sure. The supply chain um, 
alignment, the whole re resilience of the supply chain will become important. We'll not only look at the capacity, the cost, uh, et cetera, but the capabilities, the reliability, et cetera, of the supply chain, including overseas one. Is the country dependable? Is the political situation strong, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, the agility, as Nishan said, that will be the prime thing, increase agility. So these, were, these will be the long-term changes which will happen depending on how the situation goes. One of the three cases happens, the timelines will change. For these. But these are, I believe, things that will happen. So just to recap, the six changes that you said would be long-term, correct? Fine. One was inward focus and the value imperative will pay more attention or we uh, the value part will come into or will be more prominent in the whole equation and then agility and uh, and supply chain alignment these are the four and the others were alternate cost models and digitization alternate cost models and digitization great great these are great takeaways uh, now, are questions of, yes, sir. Uh, Arun Kumar of KPMG. So very nice. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, now questions have started to come in and we have two more questions to cover among ourselves. So we'll try and give as much value on these two points. Uh, one is now coming out of the immediate challenges that we have. Can we talk about the main vulnerabilities that the manufacturing sector has been having and the reason why you know, make in india could not take off the ground as it was expected so my question simply to you gentlemen is that do you feel the manufacturing industry was hit harder because of the deep vulnerabilities that it already has and what are these vulnerabilities if you could enumerate for us nishan uh I think if you look at it uh, in India, you know, still yeah. most of our uh, manufacturing is unorganized, right? Yes. It's primarily yes. the unorganized sector. Mm -hmm. Now, um, um, you know, uh, I think uh, if it tends to be much more organized, you know, our resilience would increase to such kind yes. of uh, scenarios. Uh, what we by organized? To... Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But for my understanding, by organized, you mean more organized companies? Because 98% is MSME. See, I mean, I can, yeah. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, you know, I belong to Ludhiana, right? I've been okay. born and brought up in Ludhiana, spent most of my, uh, you know, um, um, adulthood in uh, Ludhiana, right? Mm -hmm. my, on my even younger days in Ludhiana. Oh, you know, that, that city is filled of so much of innovation, frugal <laughs> engineering. You know, the only thing is that there is there a lack of systems. Right. Yeah. There yeah. are there are lack of customers there. Otherwise, you know that I mean I I mean Ravi would be you know because he's into uh, machine building, so I, I he would have a much more better sense of it. But there is so much of creativity in that place. The only thing is that they do not have any kind of channel or way to showcase their uh, you know this this trend. So if if we are able to work on that, you know I think there is no end to it. You know. Indians are born entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about Gujarat, right? Okay. We, we, we are filled with entrepreneurs. It's just that, you know, how do you channelize all that energy, all that creativity into that one single uh, pipe? Okay. And, uh, okay. I, I think that is that is something uh, what, what, what Understood. we look at. Understood. Understood. Yeah. And that is a very positively oriented answer to a question um, I can well, always look at the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But that's so. From a media perspective, the answer that uh, you know a journalist would look for that what is lacking. But I'm so glad you uh, you know you spun it in a very positive fashion. Um, so that would be one. Uh, yeah. You know, jokes aside, but one is that how to better organize or uh, the lack of organization of the manufacturing industry per se is one vulnerability that we have in India. Uh, or in simple terms that you know, the MSME sector and the unorganized sector comprises a large part of the manufacturing industry. That is a, a weakness, 
Yeah. What are the other vulnerabilities because of which the sector was hit harder? Um, I think uh, it is, you know, our dependency on the primarily, I mean, migrant labor, right? Yes. Uh, is is one of the other this thing you know we have not been very uh, uh, focused in terms of you know adapting uh, uh, technology yes, yes right so that is that is another we are still working with respect to you know old uh, um, uh, manufacturing methodologies okay. so that is that is another one that i could think of but i think i have been more focused on looking at uh, you know opportunities that this this, <laughs> this created Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Ravi, you want to give us some bad news, which is what... The no, absolutely no. I think I'll be more optimistic than me, <laughs> unfortunately. No, I'm, I'm a great advocate of... Uh, I, actually, I was uh, very, very enthused when our Prime Minister said that because uh, see, I think uh, we have to differentiate one thing. A leader... Uh, when we are CEOs, we expect something out of us. But when somebody else is a CEO, we have too many things to point at. Yes. That. Yes. You know, as a CEO of this country, he set a vision for the country. And I think he did a beautiful job of that. Right. Okay. Okay. It's for us managers, as his managers, as his manager. to take it to the conclusion. Yes. Yes. I yes. think he failed a little bit, if at all. Are we not the political leadership i think they had a, he had a will to drive that and did okay it. okay now, uh, i won't be disappointed with what has happened in our country in you know, you know I, it's a tough it, it's a tough challenge to take yes um, yes we have our own challenges within the country mm -hmm. some of them uh, nishan has said i mean entrepreneurial small companies is uh, a great strength of this uh, uh, country, but at the same time, there are certain limitations because because of the country's environment. I mean, you don't yeah. have yeah. a uh, you know, conducive environment to conducive scale. Environment. Entrepreneur has a great idea, but wants to scale up. Yes, there are certain limitations. Now, these are the things that we have to work as a country. Not blaming. Okay. Uh, we are federal, so there is a combination of center and state. And state, yeah. We'll have a different priorities that clashes will happen. But I think people are, in, uh, are getting aligned to that reality. Okay. In some time, good it has taken some time so that you trash your issues in the beginning. Now, if when it takes up after all this settles down, these are unfortunate things that's come as hurdles in between. But once okay. all this comes through, I think these of things happening will be much faster. Yes, I'm not um, you know, at all telling that there are no uh, more issues to be resolved, there are many, many issues, right? So what happens is an entrepreneur today who comes from the technical mindset would be focusing only on technical thing. Instead, uh, we have so many things around that he has to look at, am I following all the laws? Bank wala kya bola? Kya kya form hai mujhe? What has to be done then? Some electricity guy, some, you know, we have so many things to do, which he does, which is not his core strength. Whereas that is what doesn't happen in Germany. Right? He Now he's an entrepreneur, he starts a company, he's technical minded, he makes a mark in his product in technical, because he's 10%, 15% occupied in the residual things. In our country, we are spending those entrepreneurs, those individual people, smaller companies, spend 50, 60, 70 percent on those things, that takes away a lot of energy. If we get out of that, which the government is trying to, that's why the ease of business, we moved fairly high, but still a long way to go. A long way to go. If we right. do that, I don't think we have any other option than to be leading. This. Now, I believe that this is very, very critical for everybody of us to join hands with the government and do, because if we don't do leave aside the economic issues in the country because of the demography and the size we'll have social issues social issues that's correct right. we don't do so it's so much important for us for our next generation to lead a great life that we push manufacturing to become a 25 percent of our gdp so that okay. everybody is uh, <clears throat> you know, productively employed to do this correct correct 
Now, before we take <clears throat> uh, the the attendees' questions, one uh, question that uh, that we all think about is that of the global perspective. Now, manufacturing in India, as you know, constitutes about 18% of the GDP, 16 to 18%. Um, and the other parts are uh, agriculture and services. But from that perspective, it appears that manufacturing is not as significant uh, or does not play such a significant role in India. But if you look at the global picture, you'll see that even the developed economies have uh, the uh, share of manufacturing to about this size only. I mean, the United States, and I have some data on this, um, the United States uh, represents, uh, manufacturing represents 12% of the nation's output. Uh, in Japan, manufacturing is 19% of the country's GDP. <clears throat> China obviously uh, has much more, being the manufacturing leader of the world or the factory of the world, at least till December, um, till which time we know what the data stood at that point of time, after, after which everything went topsy-turvy. But China has 27% uh, of GDP share that goes to manufacturing, that comes from manufacturing. So point is that when you look at the global picture, we see that uh, China, the United States and Japan, they comprise 48% of the world's manufacturing output. And these are the top three manufacturing uh, countries in the world. And then we have Germany, South Korea. Now Germany contributes 7%. South Korea, 4%, and India, 3% to the world's manufacturing output. Now, considering the population that India has, 3% contribution to the world's manufacturing output, if you take it by per capita, India goes way down the list, despite having the same share of manufacturing that, that other developed com companies, uh, countries have. So what is missing? Why India is not able to contribute to the global value chain and what needs to be done that it's does in the future, Ravi? Yeah, um, I think there are two points to that. One, we were very happy, whatever we are, even in 16%, we are very happy uh, in sending a good part of this manufacturing into a low value added things, right? You take 19% of Japan. Yes. So it's really high value added uh, manufacturing. Yes. Yes. Had they had minerals, had they had mining, had they had all the other things, I think all the whole manufacturing would have been much, much higher. Right? Yes, yes. Most countries are not spending in that. We are very happy in spending in that. That's an important part of economy. But then this is when we have the basic raw materials to everything, actually our value addition should be much higher. Instead of exporting raw material and importing the finished food out of that raw material from some other country mm -hmm. and use this raw material only for us to convert it into a much higher value added product and when the value added product goes up obviously your whole gdp value goes up right so that's the change one we should make okay i believe that we have the strength of our people behind us. I don't think any other country has this great combination of the demography and the technical strength. If you take the number of people who are technically skilled in our countries, much, much higher than any other country in the world. So if you just, it's a question of putting all that into collective working and a collective objective of the country. Uh, as you said, it's the per capita is very, very less per capita value addition or in yes. value is absolutely decimal and that's yes. why we have to do that somewhere we're getting lost into a very quick fix things let's take uh, the it part it's just to digress a little bit and that's not the mistake we should do in manufacturing just do a service just do something which is low value added but can scale up very high and then you're suddenly your valuations go up and you're very happy did we make a great product and then take the value much higher, or we just want to be some, uh, you know, uh, app creator and not adding a value to that. And that mistake we should not do in manufacturing. Otherwise, we'll be a semi-trading manufacturing uh, economy. Do a little bit, charge screw, you put it into that, and then say that yeah, 
I'm now exporting. Yes, the value will go up, but can we add value to that product? That's where, I mean, we have to move to that decommoditized product. If at all we have to challenge, say, a China in whatever partial levels we have to do, we cannot be in a commoditized thing, what somebody did, and then try to challenge. It's going to be very difficult. The easier path will be to de decommoditized product and add value to that and do that. Right? That's my great. most important. Yeah, I take from the machine tool, just the numbers, few numbers. Nobody can be in a manufacturing company if you don't have machine tool as a strong uh, industry. Because the first thing you start is by machining something and then right? machine tool, China does say 25 to 30 billion uh, dollars. Wow. That's their wow. requirement, right? Correct. What does India do? Three billion, three and a half billion. So, what, 10 times? Wow. That's okay. about 10 percent. It's about 10% of what China does. All that. Can we be three times? I mean, that changes the whole scenario. I think everybody of us would be smiling year to year if, I mean, <laughs> there is a huge opportunity. We just have to put in a collective thing to do. And we have to do that. It has to go three times to four times our, uh, you know, product manufacturing. And what are we talking about? $5 trillion dollar uh, economy, right? In which manufacturing will be one a trillion. Uh, we, you know, it's two and a half times. We have to do that. I, if we don't do that, I think we will uh, not use our collective intellect of this country. You're mute. Anand, you're mute. Anand, you're mute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ravi. That's very in <clears throat> insightful and helpful. Sorry, just a second. Yeah. So Nishant, uh, one is why why India India's manufacturing output is so low uh, from a global perspective. It is at about three percent, even after you know seventy years of independence. Why have why do we lag behind so much uh, from a global think, perspective? And what can be done yeah. to bring this contribution up? See. Uh... Just taking cue from what Ravi said, uh, I think, uh, you know, in India, if we are able to have an emulation of uh, service industry and the manufacturing industry, you know, when I say service industry, let me put it from the technology perspective, you know, IT mm -hmm. from that mm -hmm. perspective, you know, if we are able to have an emulation of the same and just not mm -hmm. have the service part, service part, what Ravi was referring with respect to service of the machinery, I'm mm -hmm. talking from the service industry perspective, you know, in terms of the IT. Correct. If you're able to have an amalgamation of both, I think, you know, okay. it can be a win-win situation for India. Okay. Right? In India, we are not able to capitalize on this. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're not able to create a bridge between both the two aspects. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, US has been doing it. US has just not been, I mean, US has been only been creating that bridge. Right? Mm -hmm. Either they have that service or the technology part, not that much. They, yes, they do. But primarily, you know, and manufacturing from China. Right. So I think, you know, India can uh, India can create this bridge by itself. And second, to answer to your question, uh, Anand, I think, you know, the crux lies in the education. Right. That's we true. need to revolve our education sector. You know, we need to teach entrepreneurship. I mean, of course, it's built into it, but it needs to be groomed. It needs to be bought into Correct. it. You know, I, I think we should come out with incubation centers for, uh, you know, to be an entrepreneur or to be a you know, into manufacturing, like how we have it in the IT. But I think, you know, those kind of incubation centers are required for manufacturing. I think if we are so able true. to do that, nothing is there to hold us back. That's we so have true. the right kind of DNA to be there. That's so true. And intellectual property leadership that comes from innovation, and it, you so rightly pointed out. See, even in this situation, um, I don't know if it is related to the subject, but it is important that when it comes to PPE or making vaccines or coming up with new drugs. Obviously, India has, you know, is a, one of the largest manufacturers when you already have a vaccine or when you already have a drug. But in order to come up with that uh, idea or uh, test, the, so the innovation um, environment in India is sorely lacking, which, which you so rightly pointed out. Do you have anything to say on this part that how manufacturing in India could step up to the challenge of coming up with uh, new solutions to, hand, to uh, 
uh, address this crisis like pp and vaccines and drugs see uh, nishant you have any view on that yeah i mean i'm i I'm, you know i'm no expert when it comes to uh, health or medical but i get i can share certain examples what is happening in the automotive space like you know okay. for us uh, acma is a is a constituent body for all the auto components manufacturers so they they have created something like this you know uh, what they call it as suction and i think if i'm not mistaken i think it's it's, it's already in existence uh, in the in the machine tool industry so uh, we just need to uh, push that concept we just need to create those as incubation centers right i mean they are just i mean they are there but they are just there in the form of uh, you know uh, brick and building uh, we need to reenergize them and i think uh, you know and and uh, better tie ups with uh, premier institutions like iits and linking them not to these uh, you know like uh, to large scale industry but linking them with uh, the small and medium sized industries i think that can mm-hmm. create magic Great, great, Ravi. Yeah, one thing is um, we uh, we have to um, really use the power of the youth. Yeah, we have a different thinking of people. Now, what uh, we are trying to do in our organization, because uh, also a very um, old, experienced organization. One of the you know we have our chief engineers who have. 35 40 years experience of builders of this uh, you know country's machine tool industry now you cannot lose the knowledge out of those people their gems right so we just trying to do uh, something called uh, the matchmaking of uh, the uh, gems of skill and the stars of youth right now this has to work very well because you have a great uh, set of people in the younger this thing who can grasp things faster but you are a set of people who have all the knowledge and experience that has to be pushed into these people so that's the bridge we are trying to the faster we are able to do that the results would be much faster now the great opportunity for you know, the manufacturing industry nishan said is the combination of it and ot i mean it and operational understanding right yeah. the shop floor thing correct technology in the shop floor and machines how do you make them the smart machines today so the whole it is there it's not only a casting and a mechanical thing into it now that's where the industry is moving the faster we move that that difference we can create as a country because i don't think uh, any other country in the world has that much of it ot strength because strength. we learned a lot in the automobile uh, people learned from the japanese and things like that we have a great ecosystem in the automobile right. Right. just getting translated to other people like the machine tool people etc so we learning that ot part very well it is a strength we learn mathematics from the beginning we have every indian is so strong in mathematics if we mix this the smartness in every product that we make correct a differentiator for the country and we we are seeing some real successes in that we are seeing some success so uh, if there was a machine tool builder from europe dominating for last 20 years 30 years everybody in the world would buy only his machine swear by his machine we as a new entrant have been able to take away 90% of that uh, person's market with the machine right. build, and by people who are sub 40 right so it's it, it's just that we have to give them the space to do that uh, speed is an issue that we will have to fight in our country if we are able to do that i think we can make the difference because time is going to be an essence if you can let it go and uh, you know let the country miss this generation i think the next generation of the advanced country will be much smarter than us and have- <laughs> great 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 thank you thank you ravi now let's take uh, the first question from sachin gambire mr gambire can you hear us <clears throat> mr gambire he's on mute i think he can okay hello Mr Gambire can you hear us yeah, hello yeah yeah uh, i can hear you all good morning good, good morning 
good morning yeah so you you represent hello yes we can hear you sachin you're audible yeah i can hear me good morning all and uh, thank you for the interesting session uh, i am uh, logged in not quite late maybe 5 minutes i was delayed but i hope i did not miss the uh, conversation in the beginning so thank you thank you for arranging this session and very interactive sessions i am just going through since last 50 minutes all together sachin i believe you represent trump trump india right hello Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I am a servant from India. Uh, okay. I am taking care of uh, business professional marketing over here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Where Where have you joined us so, from? So uh, we are all connected. I joined uh, just five. As in, uh, as in, which part of the country? Which part of the country? Sachin. Our headquarter is based. Okay, there is some connection issue over there. Sachin, can you hear us? I can hear you all very, uh, very, very clearly. Very clearly. So you have joined in from Pune? Is that what you said? Yeah, I am joining from Pune. Correct. Okay. How is the situation on the ground there, Sachin? uh pune and uh, pimpri chinchor basically it is totally in red zone and uh, we are not uh, allowed to move uh, out of the homes as particularly and uh, what we hear from the local news uh, what is being published today is the lockdown may be extended after 3rd may till end of may that is what the news is coming today morning okay after i woke up i saw some news. on the local channels and also some subscription that i made to the newspaper over here mm -hmm. so news are flashing that there was a, a committee from central government that came to pune and mumbai to survey the situation what is over here okay and it is predicted that may end after 3rd of may till may end that is what okay. the news started flashing today okay 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 so i believe there was some partial relief from the government that some units can open in the rural areas uh, i i guess that will not be applicable to pune right given that it's the red zone yeah uh, it is not happening because uh, the industrial areas which were under gram panchayat they were given some reliefs but uh, when you apply for the permissions to the local authorities there are a lot of norms or a lot of regulations they put forward so Uh, when i discuss with our customers also who are into gram panchayat zone for uh, surrounding pcmc okay what they say it is uh, better to keep employees at home and wait for the lockdown to get over officially from the local authorities rather than applying for the permits and uh, making people to travel all the way to company and because there are a lot of uh, restrictions given by the authority and it is very difficult to manage when people actually starts operating in the on the shop floor so that is how the feedbacks coming from our customers as well that's very that's very like helpful thank you yes yes please go on yes yeah because uh, just yeah just one example suppose uh any the manufacturing facility starts operating with suppose 20% or uh, is unfortunately uh, someone spits in the factory area then that is also one of the point that uh, Uh, the uh, factory manager may be uh, lodged with FIR or right. something like that. So it is better right. to stay at home and uh, not to risk the life of the people. That is what the decisions the companies are taking and waiting for lockdown to get over officially. Correct, correct. And that's a very, very tricky thing because though that the uh, manufacturer yes. that that company officials will be held liable for uh, this. And the, I believe uh, the government has come out with a clarification. that that is not the right interpretation but the order is little ambiguous on that front which is creating some kind of an issue for plants to open up right exactly because though the plants is in plants are in uh, uh, gram panchayat zone but the most of the workforce those uh, operate there those are basically from city or maybe the part of pcmc or pune uh, jurisdiction so mm -hmm. there are a lot of travel restrictions that the people even don't uh, can't go out of their homes and kind of a thing 
Okay. It is again another challenge for manufacturing facilities to start the operation. So as of now, it is almost ninety-five percent of the industries are still closed. Maybe the essential goods and essential commodities; those are only operating okay. uh, up to five percent of. If you look at Chakan or if you look at surrounding like um, Talega or uh, some kind of uh, on the Nagar Road over there, only five percent mm-hmm. of the companies are operating. Almost ninety percent are uh, kind of closed till now. Okay, thank you, Sachin. Thank you. That was very helpful. Uh, what you shared. Uh, your question, Sachin. If you want to ask any other question, I think you asked a China question, which is more a macro question. Yeah, that if was you just. Want to ask anything more immediate that is concerning you, you can also ask that question. No, no, because that was particularly coming into my mind because we also okay. uh, uh, we are also working from home and. Uh, trying to connect with everyone and our industry people also so i thought this these are uh, two industry leaders uh, one to one chats are happening so maybe i should take your uh, take their thoughts over here that yes, we are please. hearing a lot of things about industries moving out of china and going back to their own countries or maybe india can benefit from this particular um, shift of uh, you know change in manufacturing this so how much reality in that in particular if you talk about ground reality that was my 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 question just for Um, you know, get get clarity from these two gentlemen on this. Sure, Nishant, you want to take that first? Yeah, I think uh, uh, you know one thing we need to accept is that we will never be able to beat China when it comes to cost, right? Mm-hmm. The other things that we can uh, probably, I mean, this shift, I mean, what people have been talking about, I mean, people have started assuming that this is going to come to India. right there has been no kind of notion statements we have other competitions with other countries like vietnam and you know taiwan and um, a few other you know southeast asian uh, countries so um, i think we 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 rather than waiting for this opportunity to come in i think we should just work on ourselves in terms of you know what have been our weaknesses and and let these opportunities just come on to our door i even if they come i mean i'm not too sure first of all whether they're going to come to india or uh you know what is going to be the macro economic scenario i'm no expert in that but i think from the uh, from the entrepreneurs perspective all i can say is that we should be ready when this opportunity comes in, you know i think we should just align ourselves in with respect to the requirements that uh, these countries have uh, and uh, we as in metalman you know we've been working on those uh, uh i mean the uh, what we did was you know we we created a um, a kind of a swot analysis with respect to china you know and then trying to work on those weaknesses and if the opportunity is there you know it would it will definitely come but not only counting on that they you know they are going to come to us and we'll be will be we we'll we'll i mean they will automatically come to us so i think it is just to just to be you know prepare yourself rather than wait for great great input thanks nishan ravi a good question sachin and uh, i think there is a little bit of emotion in that uh, news as well so i won't take it completely as only a uh, you know economic thing so yes something will come but uh, as nishan says it's not going to just come right we have to do something uh, then the chances of that opportunity is there now to get that we will also have to do a lot of effort from the government side from us as company size and only it will come to us uh, the if you see the earlier part also couple of years ago also a lot of companies moved out of china the japanese etc but they went to some other countries where if you came to india because i mean it's very simple the water will come where you know the river flows in a particular way where it finds a easy path to go of least resistance right so i think there still is resistance in our whole uh, ecosystem ecosystem uh, there is a little bit of uh, that uh, you know comfort of trust between uh, our people and the other people i think it's a it's something that we all will have to work in but it's a great opportunity some part of it will definitely come but that some part itself will be very huge for us so uh, i would say that uh, we should all have uh, eyes and ears open and do things that we can attract some part of that uh, investment to our own industries and our <coughs> but that opportunity is there and that's going to be pretty big that we can't say no to thank you thank you ravi 
Now let's take another question from Mr. Chabra, Mr. M. Chabra. Mr. Chabra, can you hear us? Mr. Shabra, just a second. Hello. Yes, Mr. Shabra, how are you? I am good, thank you. How are you guys? Very good, very good. Where are you calling from? I'm basically calling from Faridabad, right next Faridabad. to Which company? ONS Engineers. We are basically ONS. for uh, Taiwanese brands, a lot of Taiwanese machine tools. So that's how it is. Okay. So what's the situation in Faridabad and what's happening with the organization that you work with? Uh, right now, Faridabad, within Haryana, Faridabad is in red zone as of hmm. right now. Uh, hmm. But uh, as a whole, Haryana has been doing pretty well. You know? uh, we have seen a lot of like, recoveries here. Shops are being opened up again after last night's ruling. So yes, yes, yes. We are definitely looking, looking at a brighter side. Okay. And uh, hoping that, you know, very soon uh, we'll get better permissions to open up our uh, units. Because okay. uh, some of uh, our clients have already opened up, which are enlisted in the essential services. Okay. But uh, full-fledged opening up hasn't been uh, there till now. Okay. We need time as well. Okay, okay. Uh, and before you ask your question, you mentioned that you work with Vietnamese clients, right? Taiwanese. Taiwanese clients. Yeah. Yeah. So, one question that Sachin asked before this yeah. was about China and the factories are moving out of there. So, have you seen any movements because of the trade war before as the of, this site is struck? Sorry, as of right now, we haven't seen any movement as such, particularly that is uh, going to affect us as such mm -hmm. uh, because uh, most of our uh, input comes out from Taiwan. So okay. we are not uh, dealing with China as such. Plus, uh, with China, we don't know what kind of emotion we'll be seeing after this all ends with uh, respect to, uh, you know, how people will perceive China once it all uh, uh, goes back to normal. So we really can't say as of right now, uh, you know, if there is any movement or not. But uh, I think a lot of think orders that could go to China have been going to uh, you know, other countries because of the trade war before and now because of the crisis. Could that be a possibility? They could, that could be a possibility, but uh, as of see, uh, it's a very simple thing. China itself is a very big manufacturing hub and right now, very few uh, countries have that scale of manufacturing capabilities and facilities. Mm. So, it's almost impossible to just believe that maybe one day after, even after this pandemic or something, you know, there will be a sudden shift. Yes, a gradual shift we can see that we had been seeing even before. Vietnam has been coming up irrespective of this pandemic, whether this pandemic was there or not. Vietnam was still coming up as a, uh, you know, uh, the next uh, level of competition for India as well as China. So, okay. uh, I don't think so. There will be a very sudden shift. But yes, a gradual shift can be possible in the Okay. Time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sabra. Any question and any particular panelists you want to address this to? Uh, yes, uh, mostly it will be for uh, Mr. Ravi. Yes. Uh, so basically, like, uh, since we are also in machine tool industry, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem with us, like we know that even like BFW and most of the Indian manufacturers take their supplies out of Taiwan, like basic things like, you know, guideways and ball screws and everything. Whereas on a whole, we also take our machines from Taiwan. So as this year, we are not really sure of what the market is going to show us because as an importer uh, we are we are kind of in a in like in mid waters you know about uh, how the industry will be like and you know like um, will it will it uh, will we actually because as you said already we were going through a low point in the industry and now after this pandemic it has pushed us further down so you know what kind of recovery measures one should apply towards focused focusedly towards uh, machine uh, like you know selling and uh, client building up uh, portfolio that kind of uh, activity what kind of steps we should take to recover from this uh, pandemic after things go to normal thanks uh, mr chabra and uh, i'd put it in two parts one is in the short term i would say we have to be cautious uh, because uh, uh, 
it's it's a product that it's not that uh, it's a very general product you can give it to anybody you can uh, you know it's a general purpose thing so i would suggest we have to be cautious we are not you know we made two scenarios uh, one is a pessimistic one is an optimistic and uh, the realistic looks very closer to the pessimistic than the optimistic in the medium term i'm talking about a 6 month 9 month time frame so i would not like to be very bullish in this for the next 6 months uh play as it comes but in the long run yes uh, a change is happening in the long run uh, what we are seeing is that a percentage uh, we are seeing two uh, you know different phenomena one the average price of the machine has gone up right the second price the second thing is uh, the mix of uh, you know more accessories to the machines are going up so people want different things right people are wanting to change as well the first point why i said the value is going up people are not wanting just straight forward machines they want a value addition to that and uh, that part is these are the difference that's definitely coming and a lot of automation to the machine over 40% of the machines that we seeing has some small or big automation into it so automation is going to be the uh, flavor going forward solutions is going to be the way forward uh, but in the short run i'd like to be very very cautious about the demand great thank you ravi now we have come to the end of the session the timing was till 11:15 Before we wrap this up, I'll ask a quick question to both the panelists: uh, Is that what is your message to to stakeholders of the manufacturing sector? How should they deal with the current situation, and what are the things to do in order to come out stronger out of the other end? Uh, Nishan, your message. I think number one message is uh, you know um, is to be positive. right look at the uh, you know the positive side of this uh, crisis there is an opportunity uh, it's a very good time to reset yourself you know you hardly ever get a chance like this so uh, we not even from the organization perspective but even from your uh, own perspective so um, you know re look at how you do business i think this is this is once in a life opportunity you would not get that again and let it you know um, uh, just play out because you have no control over it you know great whether it's a, great. whether it's a domestic uh, whether a situation whether it's a global situation you have no control over it the only control you have is over your company and yourself so work on that it's a great optimistic note thanks thank you shant ravi yeah same uh, i think this is not once in a lifetime once in a century opportunity after 1920 probably this something came like this and uh, maybe one generation didn't get such a opportunity we are fortunate to um, see something like this which we i won't say fortunate in that sense but uh, from a different perspective that let's make use of it we will be all uh, wasting this chance if we don't make a difference for ourselves and the organization and if you want a last if you give me half a minute i'll just read hey. with something sent uh, somebody sent it to me and which is probably very very put in and today it comes from uh, khalil gibran uh, you know uh, when what he says is when the river uh, goes it takes a very tedious path going through the rocks hitting the rocks falling down you know uh, hitting the trees etc it takes a very tough and a tedious path but when it comes closer to the ocean it has a huge ocean in front of uh, it right now that's where we are in that crux we have taken all that tough maybe another one month we will take a lot of hits only yes. uh, getting through that but we have that ocean in front of us which and once we get into that you have a huge, wow. huge uh, <laughs> so a, that's the opportunity in front of us what a lovely thought what thank you ravi what a lovely thought and expression an ocean of uh, opportunity awaits us after this period thank you so much and that is just the perfect sentiment to end this session with my heartfelt thanks to both the panelists to the attendees who have joined us from different parts of the country and given us 
their value time. There are some questions that have gone unanswered. I'll send them to the respective panelists uh, and send them back uh, their, their responses. We do this every week on Saturday, so you can join us the next week also with your questions. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. See you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Anand. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.